Hi, I'm Baosian and I'll be representing Team Bobs for this presentation today. So the challenge that we have attended is Challenge 15, which is on cybercrimes, infodemic and misinformation. So we'd just like to thank again our challenge sponsor tech 4 she as well as organizers AWS and NUS. And so the contents of the presentation today, first I'll cover the problem introduction, followed by our solution, and then technical details of our solution, and lastly, going further, what's next after the MVP. So the problem introduction. Fake news is actually a defining issue of our time, but it's actually an old phenomenon which has been turbocharged by all the technological advancements of today. So the technological advancements include accessibility of internet as well as the rise of social media. So this has led to major threats that we see now, especially in terms of regional and global risk. So an example would be the COVID pandemic recently, which I saw a lot of misinformation being spread online and on different platforms. And some of these have even been criminally, uh, have criminal intentions behind them. So what are the current solutions? We can split them into four different areas. So firstly, government regulations. So these are laws being passed to control the spread of misinformation through technology platforms. Next will be fact checking. So fact checking has been implemented by tech giants such as Facebook and Twitter on, uh, on their platforms basically using artificial intelligence. Complementary to that, we have independent fact checkers such as Media Bias Fact Check or Snopes.com. So these are basically websites which review content on the internet and then post a lot of information regarding these content. Lastly, we have public education, which is education campaigns engaged by governments or organizations to encourage more discerning behavior by the public. So for example, Singapore government actually promotes a show framework, which in essence, uh, tries to encourage the understanding of context together with the content. So what are the gaps within the current solution? So we can distill them into three big areas. Firstly, the lack of feasibility of current solutions. So if you look on the right, there's a screenshot of notrealnews.net, which is basically a website that contains articles with fake news stories generated with AI. So they have been really uh, effective in escaping fact checks. Next, current solutions also promote an over-reliance over on external services. So for example, uh, fact checking now is being implemented by flagging or removing any questionable content on uh, web, on platforms, basically. But what this does is uh, the public is reliant on these flags or these removals, and actually this work, uh, works against public education campaigns. Lastly, there's a limited reach. For independent fact checkers, they are less ac accessible because they are on a totally separate platform. Right? I, and education campaigns also face a limited reach because their effectiveness basically depends on the receptiveness of the population itself. And so our approach is basically to combine three important elements. First, people. We want to continue providing convenient access to information from all sources to people. Next would be education. So we really want to drive uh, the increase in public ability in identifying misinformation. Lastly, tools. So we want to leverage smart technology together and provide information rather than just filter content. And so to summarize, we are basically looking at the problem statement as how we can we curb misinformation and make tools smarter and not just smarter by themselves, but in helping educate the public to combat future infodemics. So next will be our solution. So for our solution, uh, in principle, we aim to combat future infodemics by encouraging public to be more discerning uh, in consuming their information and sharing them. And we want this to be seamless, right? And so for our implementation, our solution is actually an extension to current chat platforms such as WhatsApp or Telegram. Um, and the solution basically promotes more discerning behavior by doing do two things. Firstly, uh, appending contextual information with every shared link on the platform. And secondly, prompting for more human checks uh, when forwarding messages. So more details about these two features. For the contextual information sharing, um, so we have four measures of contextual information. First would be source credibility followed by source bias. So these two actually refer to the source. For example, uh, if I have an article from Straits Times, the source will be the Straits Times. And then we also have content popularity as well as content sentiment. Content popularity refers to 
uh, the popularity or how widely reported the topic of the article is. And the sentiment would be the uh, emotional, the language use, whether it's emotional or neutral of the article itself. Right? And these are presented in an overlay, which I'll show in the demonstration later on. So the second feature will be message prompts. So as you know, some information are being shared to uh, forwarded long messages over different chat applications nowadays. So this setting, uh, this feature is actually a setting which would allow users to toggle and if activated, uh, when we attempt to forward long messages, it would prompt for the user to do a double check basically. And what, uh, what these two features do basically is three important things. We want to drive the idea that content and context come hand in hand. So with every content that you read, you need to understand the context in which it was created. Next would be to engage more human checks uh, by having our prompts to slow the process of sharing information uh, so that the users have a chance to actually check through what they are sharing. So these actually helps us create more discerning readers or more discerning public in general when consuming information from the internet. So now I'll move on to the demonstration of our prototype. So for the demonstration, what we have done is basically come up with a mock-up of chat applications. So this is just a simple mock-up. I can send some messages similarly from these users. So now I'm simulating two users. Right, and our solution really comes in when I try to send a link over. So I'll demonstrate that now. So if I send a link, what it does is it communicates with the backend to get all the information required to fill up, the, uh, fill up these fields, credibility, bias, uh, biasness, popularity, and sentiment. So if I'm a new user, I need to know what these measurements are, right? So I will just click this question mark. And it basically gives me an explanation on what each of the contextual measures are, right? And how they can help me. So this really drives the education. It help people understand how they can use contextual information to become more discerning readers, right? And to make it as seamless as possible, you basically just need to hold this overlay for two seconds and it will close and you can interact with the message as you would normally as you normally would. And to bring it back up, you just need to click this information button and the analysis portion is back up. Right. So the second feature would be for forwarding messages. So I'll attempt to forward the message now. So let me just get this. So this is just a long text message which might be you might have seen before. Um, sort of some of the messages where people may just share without thinking and what this user would do is probably just forward it to one of his friends and the information might be just shared like that. So our feature basically uh, has this toggle where we can en enable a warning prompt, right? And what this warning prompt does is it basically slows down the process by having a prompt to ask me to check before forwarding. And this basically gets me to double check by showing me the message again. And if I'm contented with the content, I can then forward it or I can choose to cancel forwarding it totally. Yep. So just to display a little bit on the back end. So we have this context service being set up and this basically uh, gives us all the information required for articles. So if I were to just use the earlier article from Straits Times and plug it in here. And you can see that the fields, bias, credibility, so popularity and emotion are being filled up. So this is on the back what is happening and what is being transmitted to the view on the front. So hopefully from the demonstration, you were able to get an idea of what our solution is like. And so now I'll be going through a bit of the technical details. So first of all, the architecture, right? So on the front end, uh, for the mockup for the chat application, we have actually used S3. Uh, so for the chat application level, we've implemented it with WebSocket API. Um, so the WebSocket basically handles all the connections. And then uh, the only change we've made is uh, added a piece of code to detect links, which makes requests to the orchestration layer. And so this is basically, just to emphasize, this is basically a mockup of existing chat applications. So after being sent to the orchestration layer, so this is where our solution really lies. Uh, the orchestration layer then aggregates information which it will get from all the analysis layers and then it will cache the information on our RDM. So our database we use is actually MySQL for the speed of it because we really intend to improve the performance here. And we use Lambda for basically easy scaling purposes and 
uh, easy integrating with future improvements, say if you want to integrate with some CloudWatch events or so on and so forth. For the context analysis layer, uh, we have one service basically, uh, sort of like a microservice for each analysis. So for sentiment analysis, for topical analysis, which is a popularity measure, as well as a web crawler, which I'll go through a, bit, a little bit more later. And we've decided to use Lambda for this VP as well because uh, we wanted to have open API so that perhaps other apps can easily integrate to maybe one or a few of these uh, context analysis services. And so a little bit more on the services. Um, first of all, we have the sentiment analysis, which uses Amazon Comprehend. Uh, and what it does is basically checks the text of the article being sent or the link being sent and performs a sentiment analysis using some uh, natural language processing libraries. Next, we have topical analysis, which is uh, basically the popularity score. And what it does is it basically takes the headline of the article being sent or the topic of the article being sent. And we do a Google News search with uh, different news sources. And based on the results, depending on how many of those uh, have actually, uh, are actually similar. So we use a text similarity algorithm to determine how many are similar and then therefore determine how popularly reported the topic is. For the last service, we use a web crawler. So we're actually using an external service, which is Media Bias Fact Check. Um, and they don't have API, so we use a web crawler to basically search for the source of the article through their website. And then it pulls the information regarding source credibility and source bias. Now this goes into the orchestration layer, which um, basically what orchestration layer does, it takes a URL from the chat service and then it processes the URL to know uh, which, what is the source URL. So for example, a straight science article will be straight science.com, right? And then it does a Google search to determine the title and the content. So we scrape the content from the uh, web page as well. This then sends relevant inputs to the analysis services and it again caches on the MySQL database. So on to the final part of the presentation, which is going further now that we have our minimum viable product. What next? First of all, solution integration. So we created this as an extension uh, to current chat applications such as WhatsApp, Telegram, uh, or even WeChat. So integration with them is, uh, is actually quite important. We need to integrate the display as well as the analysis services. But as we were, uh, as we were creating it, we realized that the analysis services could also be used for other platforms. So integration on the end would be great as well. And that's why for our solution, we actually developed using open API platforms so that these services can tap on those APIs that we have created. Some limitations though. Um, firstly, we have we still have some reliance on external checks. So media bias fact check uh, is one of the, the dependencies that we have and we cannot be totally sure of their reliability. Also, we understand that there are some privacy concerns. So some chat applications may have some encryption requirements, uh, which, may, which prevents us from actually checking the message itself, the content of the message itself. And that was why for our mockup, we, did, we focused very much on the checking of links rather than messages. And for messages, we created a secondary feature which would slow down and help the humans basically do double checking. Next, we also have limited measures for the uh, contextual information. So currently we have four measures, credibility, biasness, popularity, and sentiment. But we understand that having more might actually provide a better clarity in terms of contextual information to users. Last but not least, our artificial intelligence now is pretty generic as we use generic, generic algorithms. So further enhancements, firstly, would definitely be increasing the AI accuracy to provide better readings. Uh, also, we want to implement some targeted strategies. So what this means is, um, depending on demographic information, uh, if you understand that a certain demographic is more digitally inclined, they might uh, perhaps be more receptive to more measures of contextual information, whereas other demographics might perhaps be more comfortable with slightly less, uh, less intrusive and less number of measures for contextual information. Lastly, it will be fine tuning through analysis. So if you can understand the trends after we roll out the solution uh, of how much articles are being shared and uh, what are the ratings of the article being shared, we can understand the behavior of people and then fine tune our solution to really drive the education across. And before I end off, I'd just like to thank again my team and shout out to them. Uh, these are my members. And thank you everybody.